Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, making here at a short notice and on a busy day. She has to leave in 10 minutes to the parliament for some uh, other uh, requirements. So why don't we uh, release the report and maybe she can share some thoughts and then we can continue our discussion. Uh, I'll just like to introduce ma'am a little bit from what I could gather um, from the internet. So ma'am, hopefully I am factually correct. Um, she is known for her work in Kerala with e-governance. She is currently the Secretary of Electronics and IT. And she was also uh, played, playing a seminal role in the Digital India Vision team of Prime Minister Modi. Uh, when I learned about uh, Mr. Khan not being able to make, make it to uh, inaugurate the report, she, he specifically recommended that um, Aruna Ma'am will be the right person because she is now handling electronics and IT. Thank you so much, Ma'am, for coming and uh, spending a little few minutes with us. We have the report in front of you if you want to unribbon it and release it for uh, everybody. Professor Chirantan Chatterjee, Mr. T.B. Ramachandran, other dignitaries on the dais, friends. At the outset, I should say that I actually came hoping to listen to the presentation because more than anyone else here, I think I would have been one of the keenest persons to know what exactly are the findings of your study and what is the kind of set of suggestions that are being made here because I think this is a very important and integral part of the policy making. So I do hope that you will share the presentation with me. I think first of all I must commend uh, the IIMB for coming up with this study at this time because as you may know, 50 units, 40 new mobile manufacturing units and 10 component units have come in in the very short space of almost a year, a year and a half or, or less than two years ever since Make in India was launched. Now this is certainly extremely good news at one level but it also indicates what is the actual opportunity ahead. And I think the presentation would perhaps have highlighted to you that the scope for creating value in India has barely been touched. So how do we actually move from a situation where there is about 6% value addition all the way to countries like China which have nearly 70% value addition because we need local jobs to be created here clearly but we also need value and we need IP to be created in India and that is the direction in which we have to go. For that it's a complex ecosystem that needs to be created we have some elements of the ecosystem which are getting created and are being put in place as we speak but there is a long way to go before we can claim that we have a mature and comprehensive ecosystem which will actually enable us to do three things. One is service the Indian consumer and as you know today we might have anywhere between 250, 270 million smartphones of which the report I think says about 180 are getting assembled here. But we still have to move to 500 million smartphones or eventually to universalization of smartphones because as we know the smartphone is today for India at least it is an instrument 
for leapfrogging many of the uh, challenges that we have had in the past in terms of accessing financial uh, services, but in terms of accessing a number of other services, identity services, in terms of accessing e-governance services, in terms of accessing developmental services, whether it is skilling, financial literacy, digital literacy, a number of new services are actually uh, being developed which are being accessed on the mobile, all the way down to uh, you know, entertainment and uh, other kinds of new age services that are coming up. So we'll clearly have to work on several fronts. We will have to work on creating an appropriate tariff regime which can actually encourage this movement towards value addition. The first thing we all do recognize is that it has to be a phased and calibrated program because clearly nobody can move from having value addition of 6% to 20% or 30% overnight. It will have to be built organically. And for that, several actors, several stakeholders will have to come together. So tariff is one part of it. How do we build the skill sets required? And in fact, we have launched with the DIT. So the DIT is working on several of these areas. I'll just indicate what these are. Uh, clearly on the skills, there has to be uh, a great deal of work which has to be done. There's a huge requirement of people, but we have little depth in the market right now. So in all these areas, whether it is Noida which is coming up or Andhra Pradesh or around Bangalore or some of the other rural areas in India, we need to see how skill sets can be built. So we need to work in uh, association with the industry and the sector skill councils to build the skills. Then design capabilities, how do we build design capabilities? And in fact, I'm happy to mention that the very first uh, program which the Ministry of IT is funding along with a section of the industry, whereby 100 Indian designers are going to Taiwan. It's a three month program. They're actually going to get complete exposure. These are middle and uh, you know, higher level management people from industry who are going to go through a structured program which is being organized along with uh, the Taiwan uh, manufacturing industry to see how they can actually, to see what is the kind of skill sets available there and come back here and be kind of train the trainers programs so that we can train a large number of people. So design capabilities, skill sets, the tariff regime. In addition to that, the creation of good quality infrastructure, the electronics manufacturing clusters where this can uh, be manufactured. Uh, plus, I am sure that there will be uh, a lot of interaction which will be required with the Indian uh, consumer market because the requirements here are quite different. And it was very interesting for me when I had gone to Taiwan just a couple of a month ago, where they said that some of these Taiwanese companies, if you look at their depth of understanding of Indian requirements, they actually have teams sitting here with farmers, with rural artisans, etc., to try and understand what is it that the Indian consumer is looking for. And then they build that into their design. And their Knowledge, I think, is far superior to anything that I have heard here. Uh, so all these are areas where we will have to work on. Local industry, we need to have a strong partnership between government, local industry, and the other segments which play as the industry associations, the supporting organizations. So with these few words, let me once again uh, just say that I'm really very uh, grateful uh, to Indian Institute of Management Bangalore for coming up with this very important study. Uh, I congratulate them for this. And I do uh, expect to see that, you know, we should be able to embed many of their policy recommendations 
into the set of policies that we hope to bring out in the coming months. Anecdote that she mentioned on sending engineers to Taiwan is very commendable because there is economics research to show how, for example, Bangladesh has become a textile hub. We don't know this, but Desh Textiles, which is one of the earliest proponents of Bangladesh's comparative advantage in textiles, sent 100 such engineers to Dayu in Korea to train them with textile knowledge. And they come back and spawn the entire entrepreneurship and activity, innovation activities. So we can immediately see, and in fact, my uh, professor at Carnegie Mellon has theory on this, which builds basically nano economics, economics at the people level, how do you Im uh, end our implicit skills. So thank you, ma'am, for that great story. And that really rings a bell.